You know what? I'm just gonna bring the, the whole damn draw. The draw of joy. Ah! <laughs> I just pulled a muscle in my neck. Hi guys, it's Actual Mano. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. This video, I only decided today that I was gonna do it actually, and I'm not really sure why. <laughs> um, I guess this is the perfume reviewer's equivalent of what's in my bag. And the reason I'm doing this is because I have a drawer next to my bed where I sleep of perfumes, quite a few I would say, of things that I'm trying to finish. And you might sit there and say, well, why don't, if you don't like them, why don't you just give them away or, sell them and these are some perfumes that are kind of in limbo i would say the birds have just started since i've just started talking i've only waited an hour and a half for them to be calm it's okay we can get along right so these are things that i still love enough that i don't want to give away or sell or anything like that they're things that i need to focus on and they're things that there's a couple of different reasons for things being in there the whole drawer is here so apparently people like to watch stuff like this. I know I do. I do watch the, the what's in my bag videos. <laughs> do I believe a lot of them? No. These are, this is the actual stuff that's in this drawer and I'm gonna show you it because people like perfume stuff and bottles. So let's begin. Off the cuff, just gonna tell the stories as I remember them. It's, it's all of this. I don't want things to tip out, but this is, this is, this is real. This is real life. This is a real drawer of higgledy-piggledy things that um, I just really want to finish or pay more attention to. And some of these things I probably will give away after this because they've been in here for a while. Let's begin. Okay, I'm actually gonna put it next to me here. Okay, let's go. So, the first couple of things here. These things are the same. These are both um, a limited edition perfume by Diptyque, which is called Essence Incenses Rose de Mai something. It was this hexagonal type bottle and I managed to get some really large decants of this perfume. I actually really adore this and it's the reason it's in this drawer is because I have this thing about things not being in their correct bottles. I like the complete product. I like to have the whole experience of having the perfume in its bottle and this is gorgeous but they're in there because I, I just want to use them up so I don't have to look at these but these are actually in my fawn bottles from, the, from my perfume that I made but this perfume is really really stunning it's um it's kind of it's, it's for me it's kind of in the realm of Stella by Stella McCartney but the old Stella before it got reformulated into the thin wateriness that it is now. So this feels like a really rich rose peony, smooth, elegant perfume, which I really enjoy wearing. I bought it the other day, actually. God, it's, it's really, really nice. Uh, but yeah, I got a huge decants of it. So it's, it's basically 60 mils of this perfume. And that's why it's in the drawer. It's purely an aesthetic thing for me where I won't put this on my shelf because I guess I'm persnickety about stuff like that and sorry about the birds, as always. They do control my YouTube channel and my life, soz. So next to those are my little treasure. This is my fragrance that I made. This is how it actually is supposed to look. This is my fragrance Fawn. Um, I made this when I went to the south of France and uh, uh, last year or the year before, I actually decided to sell it and it sold out. So I was very grateful about that. So these are, this is the actually original one that I made when I went many years ago. That's why it's much darker. It's turned more ambery and it, the, the resins have taken hold. This is the newer one, which is lighter in color, not in the way it smells. And um, yeah, I guess they're in the drawer because I like to keep them close to my heart. Yeah, that's the reason they're in there. These aren't a try to finish thing, uh, but that's why they're in there. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be clanky and clunky. So the next thing is this. It is a vintage bottle of Lulu, and it, it's a fragrance that I really love wearing. 
but it's one of those ones that stumps me and I never know really when to wear it. I don't know which occasion is gonna fit to wear this one. The Vintage Lulu is just spectacular. It's from the 80s, if you don't know it already. It's a huge, smoky, incense tuberose perfume with so much other stuff going on. There's many, many flowers in here. So yeah, if you don't know Lulu and you like big, bold 80s florals, definitely try this one out. It's in the drawer for the pure reason that I don't display it enough or wear it often enough as a, a go-to because it's quite bombastic and it, it takes a bit of time and I don't either wear it seasonally. So it's in this drawer because I, surprisingly enough, sometimes wear it to bed or if, if I'm just basic bitching around the house during the day sometimes, I'll wear Lulu because it does scare me a little bit. <laughs> so that's why it's in the drawer and it's something that, this is actually the third bottle of Lulu I've had so I really just want to try and, I don't know, say goodbye to it. I think forever, maybe. The next thing is this, and it looks like any fans of Death Becomes Her will know what I'm talking about when I do this. Ding! This is actually a small version of Alien by Terry Mugler, and I adore this bottle. This was sent to me by my perfume fairy godmother, and the reason it's in the drawer is because I already have a big bottle of Alien, so this is my, let's use this up first or let's grab this if you're gonna wear Alien out for one night. And yeah, it's super cool actually. I I've never seen this before. I don't even know where she got this from, but it is definitely Alien and it's definitely Mugler. And um, I'm trying to figure out if it's the vintage one or not. I don't know if this might be super special and I'm holding on to some kind of gem, but I like the magicalness of this. Look, at it. I this makes me happy. Ding, da, ding, da, ding, ding. So that's the reason that's in there, purely because I have another one that I want to use this first. But now in this video, I said it's off the cuff, maybe I should just keep this one and use the other one first, because this is also, you know, weapon. You know, London's dangerous, it's a dangerous place around here, it really is. The next two things are by Aaron Terence Hughes, and I really like both of these fragrances, but they're getting a little bit rough around the edges, so they've lost their aesthetic element for me and perfume bottles are very aesthetically pleasing as much as I care more about the juice but the first one is just called Oud and this is the original formula of his Oud fragrance and this is just I can safely say it's definitely in the top five strongest perfumes I think I've ever smelled it's pretty much a huge Burmese Oud I think it's Burmese Oud I think it might be two different kinds with a hint of rose, it's that sort of classic combination, but I love to wear this, but every time I do, I get overwhelmed by it. So it's not something I want to get rid of or say goodbye to, but it is something I want to be reminded of to wear when the occasion fits. It really only works for me when it's the dead of winter and it's freezing. So the other one is also by him, and this one is Tobacco Oud and Vanilla. The reason that one's in the in the video, I was gonna say, the reason it's in the drawer is because I just don't reach for it enough and I actually really like it. It's, a, it's really fluffy, this one. The oud is very prominent. Vanilla in it is, is, is almost like a powder. It's like a powdery vanilla oud with the richness of woody tobacco as well. I really like both of them. So these two are in there for reminder reasons because other things in my collection for winter. Winter's my favorite fragrance time of year, autumn and winter. So there's so many other things that I think about before these. So when I open my drawer sometimes, oh yeah, they're there. And that's why they're in the drawer. This one, I feel like I'm treating with such disrespect because it's just shoved in here. It's getting scratched, but it is a staple of mine. So I always want it very, very close to hand. And it's CKB by Calvin Klein. Since this fragrance is released, release in whatever year it was released, I can't remember. I remember just how much I loved this way more than CK1, which everyone was wearing at the time. And it's a staple, I always have it. So this isn't even a, 
uh, I need to finish it and move on. This is just, I need to finish it because it's so big so I can get another one. So that's the reason it's in here. Oh, I'm gonna spray this on my hand because you know, I love it. It's just such a nice clean white musk, soapy. Um, it just, for me, this is the epitome of casual, but also people always say, oh, you smell really good. You know, it's, it's, it's a compliment getter and it's such a good cheapie now. It wasn't when it came out, but Calvin Klein fragrances just go down in price after not a long time, I don't think. They, they just plummet the prices. So I always have CKB in, or close to me. So this is another one I sometimes wear to bed because it's so clean and fresh and nice. Such generic words to use to describe a fragrance, but CKB, I mean, most people have smelled this, I guess. The next thing in the jaw is this very battered and bruised 100ml bottle of Argent Provocateur's La Jant. I have screamed and shouted about this fragrance quite a few times on my channel. The reason it's in there is because this one has been out on quite a few nights out with me, actually. <laughs> it's been shoved in a bag and reapplied when I've been out dancing or whatever and I have a backup of it. I have a pristine lovely little backup of it and uh, I just still really love it. I think this is, I always say it's it's one of the best commercial fragrances that I've smelled. Um, it's not going to be to everyone's taste, it's a real strong myrrh incense fragrance with powdery flowers as well. There's a couple of roses in there, I think, maybe some white florals, but really it's about myrrh and it's about this kind of femme fatale feeling. That's the, that's the feeling I get from a lot of Argent Provocateur fragrances, but look how chipped and horrible it is because the glass isn't actually colored that way. It's just a, a kind of sheen over it. So I wear this one as often as I remember to, uh, but because I've got a backup, that's why it's in the drawer. So, Argent Provocateur discontinued, I think maybe brought back again. I I'm not sure, I don't know what the history of this one is, but when I see it, I usually buy it. So yeah, that's why that's in the drawer. Staying with Argent Provocateur, I have this 100ml of Argent Provocateur. <laughs> uh, the reason this one's in there is because literally a couple of days, two or three days after I bought this one, I blind bought it because it was very, very cheap. Argent Provocateur fragrances, on, they won't break the bank, but for me, they are interesting enough to maybe warrant a blind buy. And I remember that I tried this before and kind of liked it. I immediately bought a 200ml bottle of it straight away. It was one of those moments where you just, ah, oh gosh, I got a little bit obsessed and I, I uh, wanted to get more of it and I don't even know why because I don't need more of it. So this is another one for a backup reason. I have a 200ml bottle of this packed away. So this is in the drawer to remind me, hey, wear me more often. And this is another one that I tend to, if I'm having a duvet day and I, you know, we all deserve duvet days. We all work very hard. Sometimes this is my, I'm gonna lie in bed and watch films and spray as much of this as I want, whenever I want, and I'm not gonna care uh, because it's got a really nice dry down. The opening of this one is kind of a little bit weird and harsh. It's a little bit uh, kind of lactonic floral mingled in with powder and rose. It's like a, it's almost like a clash of white floral and roses. Don't quite fit together but the dry down is soft and elegant and comforting and a little bit dirty in a nice way. So yeah, Argent Provocateur, Argent Provocateur. And for the record, I've already used this much of it and I, I got it two months ago, I think. So I do use that one quite a lot. That's a close to hand one that I need to wear or want to wear because I have a backup already. The next one, oh, okay, the next one is this. And this is, does anyone recognize this packaging? You might do if you're a fan of this fragrance uh, and you know me at all, because I'm definitely a fan of this fragrance. This is the teeniest, tiniest bottle of Samsara. And this one is, it's never gonna focus. Let me see if I can do this thing. This one is, the, it's a two mil bottle of the pure parfum of Samsara. 
and this one's in the drawer because it I love wearing Samsara so okay it's my favorite perfume in the world I think pretty much still to this day and this one I never wear it alone I always wear my Samsara and then I just go about my business and I go out and I do whatever I'm doing this one I keep in the drawer next to me now because I wear Samsara and I also put a couple of drops of the pure parfum on as well because apparently that's how it's supposed to be used I don't know a lot of people have asked a lot of questions on forums before how do you use pure parfum are you supposed to just do little tiny dabs and then go about your day I use it in conjunction with whatever Samsara product I'm using at that particular time so that's why it's there this is in there as a reminder and do you know what I still managed to forget to use this <clears throat> Even though I open the drawer and I see this abstract Samsara logo looking at me. Yeah. This says sample not for sale on it. I'm really concerned by that. Never seen that before. The tiniest bottle of Samsara in the world. And it's also the old style one, which I think is very, very cool. The next one is this, which I'm trying to surreptitiously clean without you seeing, but you're going to see it anyway. Uh, is Angel Muse by Terry Mugler. The reason this one's in the drawer is because as much as I love this fragrance, I really, really like it and I really want to continue to wear it. I wasn't finding myself reaching it, reaching for it that often. And I have other Mugler fragrances that I prefer over this one, i.e. the original formula of Angel, which I still have, and also the Angel Liqueur. I really, really like that one the most. I think it's my favorite Mugler fragrance. And when it comes to autumn winter, this one is perfect. I really think it's a very good version of Angel. It's one of the more interesting flankers or twists that the Mugler company have done uh, on Angel. So this one, if you don't know, is it's pretty much like Angel, except take out the berries and add in a smooth, nutty-like texture to it. It's it's one shade more gourmand than the original Angel. Still with that patchouli and it's actually more powdery as well than the original Angel and it's, it's a very good one. I really like this. I was really impressed when I first ever smelled this. So I can't let go of it because I do enjoy wearing it. So this is just a reminder to self. Wear Angel Muse when it's autumn, autumn especially because of the nuttiness. And I don't know why, but when I think of autumn, I think of nuts. The next beauty in this drawer, and this is one of the more special things in this drawer, I would say, is this, and it's called Kier de Lancome. And this was a gift from my fairy godmother as well. And there's only one sole reason why this is in this drawer. This isn't for any reason that I ignore it or that I don't really wear it very often. It's because it leaks, unfortunately. So whenever I spray this, perfume trickles out from underneath here and it's such a shame because I consider this to be very precious so whenever you spray this one whenever I spray this one I lose a little bit out of the side so this is something that I'm scared is evaporating and that's why it's in the drawer to use as often as possible do you know what actually it's gone down quite a bit I feel like this is evaporating look at the color of this liquid I think it's so gorgeous and when a perfume's this colour, I am just very attracted to it. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe I like orange. I don't know. But yeah, this is such a gorgeous leather. Obviously, it's called Kier de Lancôme. It's leather done in a Lancôme way. There's enough florals in here to elevate it, and it's not a dark leather. It's almost like a Kier de Rossi type fragrance, like without the Chanel magic. It's very nice, super smooth leather, not smoky in any way, and it's very elegant. I think this is from the 80s or maybe the 90s. I actually thought this was older than it was when I first got this from my fairy godmother, and I was thinking, oh my gosh, she sent me this crazy vintage. Um, upon research, it probably is very special, and I really, really like it, so I don't want it to evaporate anymore. So it's next to my bed, so I can be reminded, hey, don't forget, that one leaks. Told you, multiple reasons why these things are in this drawer. The next one is in the drawer for a couple of reasons. Sheer awkwardness of displaying it. 
Also, it's a little bit that I introduced it to members of my family and now a few of them wear it. And it's this thing, which I think you either love it or you hate it, right? It's just, it's Marc Jacobs Decadence. And I don't know if I have any original formula. I don't know if it changed or anything like that. But it's just so huge. It's literally like a bag. I mean, I mean, it literally is a bag, but it's it's just the tassel and the clunkiness of this. And I guess I could just do that. But look how less interesting that is compared to the other one. Oh, it's really dirty. Fingerprints. I really like this. It's one of my favorite designer perfumes as well. And I remember the first time I smelled this, it was my friend Kirsty that was wearing it. And we went to a bar somewhere and I kept, it, it smelled like incense to me. It smelled like violet infused incense. And I didn't, I'd never smelled it. I said, what is that? And she said, oh, it's, it's Marc Jacobs Decadence. It's a new one that came out. So I immediately went and got myself it. Didn't realize quite how, you know, annoying this bag would be, but. I still really like the fragrance, so that's why I keep it at the side. It's something that over the, my years of my taste changing, it is a, a tad too sweet for me, but I can't let it go. And I still love the smell of it. I think it's really, really gorgeous. I think it's one of his best and one of my favorite designer fragrances. And anyway, I said that. So this takes up a lot of room in the drawer. Yeah, it does. The next one is Freak by Ilamasca, and I adore this fragrance. I used to own a bottle of this before, and then my fairy godmother, my perfume fairy godmother, sent me another one when I mentioned something to her, or mentioned in a video about how much I missed it. And I actually like it even more the second time round. I'm not sure why this one's in the drawer. Let's just be honest here. Why are you in the drawer? I don't know. I don't know. That one stumped me. Ilamasca is amazing. This freak perfume, anyway. This is apparently what Lady Gaga wanted her fragrance to smell like, but Ilamasca had already commandeered this idea or this formula. I don't know. It, it might be hearsay or heresy or whatever the word is. Um, but I love it because it's it's almost like a red floral fragrance but with this huge laundry type feeling it's ultra clean and not as dark as the name or Ilamasca as a brand might portray it's actually very very pleasant and it's it, I consider it in this a similar realm to CKB in terms of how it makes me feel and the way it is it's kind of clean and gorgeous and nice and yeah it's got a lot of poisonous flowers in it I don't know how real they are it doesn't smell poisonous. It smells really, really nice and laundry-esque red floral. There you go. The next one is this, and this has been in my to finish drawer for the longest time. It's Opium by Yves Saint Laurent. <laughs> this one continuously pulls me back and forth and stumps me. I know how much I appreciate this legendary fragrance. This new Eau de Parfum formula is actually my favorite formula because I have smelled multiple vintages as well. I just don't know when to wear it, but I can't let it go. I never display it on my shelf in my autumn winter rotation. This is one of those secretive perfumes. I spray this one, I'm like, oh, I'm just, I'm just gonna, just a little opium spray today, maybe under my clothes and I'm secretly wearing it. I'm not sure it suits me. I don't think it's me. I don't know how it makes me feel, but I definitely love it. But. It's one of the OGs and even though, yeah, it's been changed, I still really adore it. So this one's probably gonna be in this drawer until 2032. We're getting towards the end. I have to mention this brand anyway, because I love them, but this has been in the drawer for a little while because it's nearly gone. And I have three or four backups, maybe even five. This is uh, Signature by Ruth Marstenbrook. YouTuber hand. So yeah, this is Signature by Ruth Marstenbrook, one of the most beautiful sheep prints I've smelled. It's a fruity, pineapple, oak, mossy, elegant, forever long-lasting perfumes that I can't get enough of. And in my recent video you might have seen, I bought quite a few backups of this perfume. And they recently sent me some 
samples of some new things they're working on, which I'm really excited about. They wanted to get some feedback from me. Ruth Mastenbrook Signature, perfect UK perfume brand. I love them. Ah, this thing. So this little box is also in the drawer. And this, I used to keep my Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab perfumes in this when I first started collecting them. When I had around six or seven, they fit very neatly in here because they were, they are five mil bottles. But that collection obviously grew, so they had to be rehomed and go to greener pastures. So now I keep a selection of random things in here. Let's hope they don't tip out and I will show you them. Firstly, this. This is something that I bought in India the first time I went there in one, my favorite resort that I stayed there. It's got this cute little twinkle on top. And in the one of the resorts I stayed in, there was a shop and they sold these Indian oils, which are not to be played with. I chose this one because it reminded me of the offspring of Poison by Dior and Fraca by Robert Piguet. This is an unforgiving, huge tuberose oil which smells super vintage it smells like perfumes from days gone by this isn't even a to finish because i rarely rarely wear this the reason this has got this much missing is because i sent a sample of this to someone many many years ago and it's kind of heavenly if you're a tuberose lover and i don't even know what it's called it doesn't have a name i don't remember how much i paid for it but it's very special and I don't think I'll ever really finish it because if you know, it, it's, it's a memory thing for me. But I really like the bottle too. Crazy strong tuberose. The next thing is this, it's called Dark Velvet and it's a rollable oil. This is actually a dupe for Tom Ford's Velvet Orchid and a friend of mine said to me, if you love Velvet Orchid, you need to try this, um, this version of it. And it's by a brand called Al Anique. Middle Eastern brand, you know, a lot of Middle Eastern brands do these dupe things. I don't know what that is with Middle Eastern brands, but they do. And this is probably stronger than Tom Ford's Velvet Orchid, except it's harsher. It's not as smooth, it's not as well polished, but it does smell very, very similar. So that's that one. The next one is an oil called Exhale, and it's by Lush, this one. This is purely a bedtime thing. This is never gonna go down because I literally put a, a dab of, a, a couple of dabs on it sometimes when I go to sleep. It's okay. Um, it's a little bit too woody for sleeping for me, but I still do it anyway. And I, I really like it. The second to last one is called Sultan and this is by Al Rehab or Al Rehab. You guys might know them as being another very affordable Middle Eastern brand. I'm not sure what this one smells like. I'm sure it's a dupe of something. And I haven't worn this for, I would say a decade. Maybe this shouldn't be in the drawer anymore. Let's put it on this hand. It's kind of nice. It feels like a Creed. I'm not sure which one. And the last thing is by a very independent perfumer called Siberi. And she sent me her perfumes ages ago. Look at how old this is. <laughs> she sent me a whole bunch of her perfumes and this is the only one that I really liked and kept and I gave the others away. It's um, kind of milky, fluffy spring floral with I think mimosa and honeysuckle and jasmine. It smells yellow in the nicest way possible. I don't mean that to sound weird. But yeah, that's that one. It's called Angelica, by the way. I think she has an Etsy shop um, yeah, and she sent me quite a few, but this one I kept. This one I kept and I do treasure it. It's a mumsy hug floral perfume. So yeah, that's the strange little uh, uh, brown box of perfume that I have within that drawer. For some reason, since I bought this, I have never displayed it. And it's completely doesn't make any sense because it's actually in my top five perfumes in the entire world. Maybe I'm trying to squirrel it away so I don't use it. That's not the way it should be. Use your perfumes, people. I can tell because it's still in its box. 
why has this never been on display? I'm not sure. And why the box is kind of chunky, doesn't really fit with everything else. I'm sure I could make it fit. Just never got around to it. So this is a fragrance called Nanban and it's by a brand called Arquiste. And this is actually in my top five perfumes ever. I just said that, but I'm gonna say it again. I can't really, the writing is really hard to show you. Uh, it's called Namban though. Is it on here? Can you see there? There you go. Namban is Southern Barbarian. This perfume contains so many ingredients that I like all in one go. It's almost like it was made for me. This is saffron and loads of sandalwood, loads of leather, coffee, tea, pepper. Um, oh my God. I don't know, I'm not gonna dwell on it too much, but this is in the drawer. <laughs> it's in the drawer, guys, in the drawer. I think maybe osmanthus as well, which gives it a bit of leather, but also sweetness. It's very exotic. It's very much complex and intriguing. I haven't worn that much of it, but I've worn this fragrance a lot over my years. This is a spicy, resinous, gorgeous thing that is hard to put into words, but I have reviewed it, by the way. So that's the last thing that's in my drawer. Namban by Arquise. I don't feel like I should put it back in the drawer, but it fits so neatly. Please let me. 